All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 28th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2022. You know, I have to look at the calendar on the computer because, well, <laughs> you say that over and over again, but, the, you know, it's hard to keep track of time when you get older. It all becomes one long blur. Um, different microphone. Why? Because I don't have the air conditioning running. That's why. Uh, the Shure SM7B, uh, because you have to be, uh, it helps cancel out that noise because you have to be close to the mic. But that also makes the volume level go up and down. So this is a condenser mic, uh, an AKG C214, if you have to wonder. And uh, one of several microphones I have. But this is, I'm going to try this because I don't have to run the air conditioner this time of year. And in this room, I have a baseboard electric heater so in the back, so it doesn't create noise. Anyway, I'm gonna, so I just swapped it out now and see how it works. Now, again, I couldn't use it in the summer. The air con would kick on, and you would hear it. Now, um, there's something I'm going to talk about, but before we get there, I want to spend some time in the scripture. And I'm only going to use a little portion of this, but I'm going to read the full portion because it is just so good. It is just too good to waste uh, on just a little thing. So <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. So we're going to look at chapters 1 and 2, I think. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Oh, this is the New King James, by the way. Some King James diehard, please. This is... A good, very good translation. Uh, the King James is just archaic for an awful lot of people. If you're raised with it, if you don't have a problem with it, by all means use it. It doesn't have copyright issues. It's not owned by a private corporation, uh, a secular corporation like so many others is, including the copyright on the New King James. And the others, like the NAS and the ESV, they keep changing. Why? Because they keep trying to get your money. And now you got people like John MacArthur with his own custom version of the NAS. The, her the what was it? The uh, heritage or whatever? His heritage. I forgot what he calls that one. But yeah, it's the, the, his name's all over it. John MacArthur, Inc., just look at his website. Look at his books. He doesn't write them, but his name's on them as author. I, I don't think that's exactly a truthful thing. How could any man write all that stuff? They don't. That is a scam. That is dishonesty. When you put your name on something as if you did it, they're based on his notes and stuff, I think. But Or they're assigned. I've heard the uh, the John MacArthur commentary set. Uh, different members of the faculty there were assigned to do different things for a fixed fee. So where does royalties go? Maybe Phil Johnson can tell us. So you don't have to. The weird stuff about John MacArthur being wealthy and all that stuff. That, that's, you know, in, in Southern California, how much the house costs? Well, my house would probably sell for 200000 10 times what I paid for it. You know, for my, my lots would probably sell for that. I've got actually three lots, uh, the, the original parcel, uh, so it's like 150 foot wide. 
uh, by about 150 foot deep. It's not huge by any means, but uh, how much would that go in a some locations in, in L.A.? Anyway, back to this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, the faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. There's a lot of in Christ here. We must be in Christ. Uh, if you're born again, you are in Christ. We are in Christ by faith in Christ. Just as he chose us in him, in him, before the foundation of the world. This is election. We are chosen in Christ. Christ is the one who was before the foundation of the world. The, the word of God. Not us. He was. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to, what? To adoption as sons by Jesus, by Jesus Christ, or in, let's see, is that in or by? Let me take a look here. Uh, not that it really makes a difference. Through, through Jesus Christ, by means of Jesus Christ to himself. So God in Christ has predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good, the good pleasure of his will. So it was the Father's good pleasure, not the Father's wrath, that did all these things. For God so loved the world. To the praise of the glory of what? His power? His sovereignty? No, his grace. The grace is much more the glory of God than his sovereignty, Mr. Calvinists. Um, yeah. Calvin. Everybody errs in many things. Yeah, his priorities were just off. Like if, if he had looked at God's moral attributes more than his uh What's the word? Non-transferable attributes. I mean, the things that that God, because he's God, has to have. But you could have an evil God. <laughs> that would be terrible, wouldn't it? An evil God or an indifferent God? Thank God we have the God that, that is. I don't even know if that would actually be possible. An evil God. <laughs> uh, that, that might not actually be possible. Maybe the, the only God that can possibly exist is the God that does exist. Don't ask me why. I just have a hunch. Uh, I am that I am, and he is the way he is. Well, certainly we wouldn't be around. Oh, unless you got... See, that, that's another problem with the, the God of... of the Westminster Confession of Faith. Let me let me narrow it down because that is the only confession of faith that I know of, other than the London Baptist, which is a ripoff. Uh, where and probably the uh, the the one there was one in between that the uh, uh, Congregationalists had too, which was also derived from the the uh, uh, Westminster Confession of Faith. Now remember, this was a state mandated confession, so. The others would want to, the dissenters would want to have theirs as close as possible. Oh, we're not really that bad. We just disagree on a few points. Uh, yeah. See, this was state-mandated religion, mandated by Parliament during the Re the English Civil Wars, at least in the mid-1600s. That didn't turn out too well. And you wonder why the Puritans were persecuted? Well, guess what side they were on? The side that cut off the head of Charles, King Charles. So that doesn't bode well for Charles III, does he? Charles II was the son that brought, came back and, well, obviously you bring the son of the king you executed back, there's going to be repercussions. <laughs> yeah, 
It's like Donald Trump. Uh, get even. What are you going to do with those who murdered or killed your father? Actually, Charles, King Charles, was probably guilty of treason. He brought in foreign mercenaries to fight against his own people. That's probably what uh, really got him executed. I'm sure that pe people that know more, have dug more into that, uh, would know. And I probably read it, but I just... Back to the important words here. To the glory of his grace, by which he has made us accept it in the beloved. Who's the beloved? Jesus. Jesus. And we're in him. There's a lot of in him here. We need to understand that. In him we have redemption through his blood. In him. So if you're not in Christ, you don't have redemption through his blood. See, this, well, if you think about this, this will explain why Jesus can die for the sins of the whole world, but the whole world is not saved. Because his death is, or, applies to those who are in him. He died for sin, the, the innocent for sin, but you have to be in him to have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And we're in him through faith, through trust in him. Not through merely believing, giving mental assent to some doctrine. No, there's a... Biblical faith is faith that trusts. Trusts in him and what he did. According to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, dis the word dispensation here is, uh, well, dispensationalists don't get it right. but I believe it's the same word. It, it means house rules. Let me check that. Um, <clears throat> verse 10. Yeah, okonomia. That this is house rules. The, the dispensation. So these are the the rules of the fullness of time. The full Jesus came at the proper time. So this was not the rules. So if you want to talk about dispensations, that's what you're talking about. The the dispensation before Christ. Under those rules, like the law of Moses. And the dispensation now is the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Nobody was saved under the law. They were only saved because they trusted God and God looked forward to the cross. But they themselves did not inherit the blessing until Jesus was crucified and risen again. And we don't fully participate in the results of the, his resurrection until he returns. Then we have the redemption of our body and were made like unto him. Both the Old Testament saints and the new. See, that, that's where dispensationalism gets really wrong because they say God has two people, uh, an earthly people and a heavenly people, the earthly Jews that don't believe in Christ, and the rest of us, you know, that go to heaven, Jews and, and Gentiles. So that doesn't make sense. I, I just, no. If something doesn't fit the Bible, toss it out. You don't have to hold to a theological system. You just happen to hold Christ and his word. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Well, this is the final thing, too. After the millennium, where after the final judgment, where all things in Christ are reconciled to the Father, one way or another, both uh, which are in heaven and which are in earth in him. It's all tied up in Christ. That's why Jesus always has to be front and center in the church, because outside of him, there is nothing 
of any value at all. And we live day by day by faith in Christ. If, you, if you're trying to live by principles, you're trying to live by the law. You're a foolish person. If you're trying to be right with God through keeping principles or keeping commandments or keeping uh, the whatever, uh, then you've cut yourself off from Christ. We, we don't, everything that we are in Christ is in him. <laughs> apart from him, we can do nothing, nothing good at all. It's all vanity apart from Christ. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. It's amazing how Calvinists can turn this into something much less than it really is. Oh, see, this proves our doctrine. That's not what it's talking about. What's the inheritance? What did he say to Abraham? I am your exceedingly great reward. God himself is our inheritance. And in him all things. In, through Christ, in Christ, all things are Christ's. And in him we have all things. You know, the bride of the bridegroom, we have a joint account. Yeah, he, he took our sin and paid it with his debt. His death. He paid our debt with his death. In Christ, outside of Christ, no. That's why I have I, I tend to prefer the bride and bridegroom analogy because it some people can understand that. You know, that that we have been made one just like and we, we become one new creation together with him. We brought our liability, and he brought his assets. He didn't have any liabilities. We're his liability. But he paid it in full. That, you know, that, that's where the all these other, if you don't have penal substitutionary atonement, all the other things are, are valueless because they can't accomplish our redemption. Which is why... The Nazarenes, no, 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 no. But there's there's people there that believe in the proper view, but the denomination doesn't. They don't teach it in their seminaries, apparently. That which means they are they are equipping. What? What's the pastor going to preach? Garbage, garbage. Self righteousness. If you stand in your own righteousness. You're not going to be standing at all. When you see the holiness of God, all your self-righteousness will just evaporate. And you'll see yourself as you are, clothed in your sin, instead of clothed in the righteousness that Christ has provided for us, which they don't believe in. They know nothing about imputed righteousness. That's maybe not the best term to use because people aren't going to necessarily understand it. But And it is a, diff, a little bit of a difficult concept, but it's a necessary one. It's necessary. If you have a, a sense of the holiness of God and his requirement that you shall be holy even as I am holy, that's Old Testament law, and Jesus said you shall be perfect even as your heavenly Father is perfect, looking to the Old Testament law again. Do you measure up to that? Do you? Do you think you do? You've been people were deceived by Wesley. Don't follow Wesley. Not in that for sure. Don't follow anybody but Christ. Including me. Don't follow me, follow Christ. If you follow Jesus Christ, thumbs up to you. I've served my purpose because my goal is to help you follow him or to point you to him. That's it. That's it. 
if you follow me and make me your... No, no, don't do that. Follow Christ. Follow Christ. I am a, a broken reed. <laughs> do not put your trust in me. Put your trust in Christ. I have to put my trust in Christ. Always. So... that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Well, what's his glory? He already told us the glory of his grace. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, that Christ, the Son of God, came, took our sins upon himself, was crucified, dead, and buried, and he arose the third day because he had justified us. In whom, also having believed, you were sealed with the Spirit, Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah, if you are in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. You don't have to go looking for the Holy Spirit. You have it. God has given you a whole package of blessings. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you haven't got the package. It comes as a complete package, only as a complete package. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? The wedding, the engagement ring, the engagement ring. I mean, it's, it's a down payment, the earnest. Use a number of different metaphors there. In other words, we know we can be certain that we'll get the rest because he has been given to us as the initial installment. Let's put it that way. As part of the initial installment of our final redemption, of our glorification. God already dwells in us. And he can do that in a sinful body, in our sinful body in which sin dwells, because and only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't have that, God cannot possibly dwell in you, and you remain intact. Mm -mm. And take a warning from the sons of Aaron. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go read it. Sons of Aaron, what happened when they didn't pay attention to how to approach God? How do we come? How, why is it that the writer of Hebrews can say we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Well, he spells it out because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because Christ has satisfied the justice of God. Our sinfulness has been paid in full by Christ. He is what cleanses us. He's sanctified his temple with his own blood. See, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the, the, is, we're sealed, we're marked by God, by having his Spirit. That is, as Paul said in another place, that uh, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, which is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't belong to Christ. Because it's necessary that if, if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Who is, and that, the Holy Spirit in us, is the token it is the it is the engagement ring that 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 is abiding with us that guarantees the fullness of all his promises toward us who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory until Christ comes the fact that the Holy Spirit dwells in us is a guarantee of our inheritance. We are marked by God, preserved by God, indwelt by God, even now. Therefore, I also, after, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Now, the fact that you love all the saints and your faith in Christ, really, in fact, as a born-again believer, is also a part of God's gift in the New Covenant. 
He has poured out his love in us. We love the brethren, and that's one of the evidences that the Apostle John gives in his first epistle, that indeed you are a saint. Indeed, you are born again. If you don't love the brethren, your brother, your, those who are born again in Christ, well, something's wrong. <laughs> Paul said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You know, there's the charismatic and Pentecost movement talk about the gift of wisdom, the gift of, revel, of revelation or knowledge. Yeah, but what is it? It's a knowledge of him. And, and they're, the charis, they're, we do have spiritual gifts. It's just that the gifts of the revelation of new information is not one of them because the, the, of the faith, because it was given once for all unto the saints. We have the fullness of the revelation of the gospel in the epistles, that which was in the New Testament, that which was given to the church once for all. If anybody adds to that or subtracts from that, don't listen to them. The papacy, don't listen to them. Rome, they, 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 they add all kinds of things. If the church requires you to add this, don't listen to them. Sanction them. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give money to you because you add to God's requirements. <laughs> You you have the off the authority of the offering plate, use it. And if the pastor says, "Why aren't you donating money to the church?" Well, when you start preaching the gospel and doing what God commands you, then I'll put money in it. Until then, you're under my sanction. And if they kick you out the door, thank God, praise God, sanction them. They're supposed to be your servants. If they're not doing their job, stop giving them a paycheck. Hold them accountable to the Word of God, to the preaching of the gospel. If they're not doing it, don't give them any money. Would you expect different if you were an employer? They're the servants of the church, not the masters. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, yes, amen, please, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints. Amen. We all It's like the promises of the new covenant, which is like the, the lost treasure of the church. I don't hear it preached. How can you not preach such great promises that God will do all these things, not us? <clears throat> and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, above all created beings, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Satan, the adversary. For, uh, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So there's the Holy Spirit who dwells in the children of obedience, the sons of obedience, 
because God works obedience in us. It's a fruit of salvation. It's not the cause of salvation. It's the fruit of our relationship with God, not the cause of our, our relationship with God. Because we are justified, we, we obey. Not, we're not just, uh, we don't, are not justified because we obey. People want to reverse those things all the time. The fruit versus the root. Christ is the root. Faith in Christ is the root of our salvation. Faith is, the, is the, what puts us in Christ and keeps us in Christ. Not our works. Our works are merely the fruit of what God works in us. Not to our glory, but to his. So the, the spirit of the power, the prince of the power of the air is Satan. The spirit who now, now he, that's the spirit that's working in the world. In, the, in those that aren't born again. Because they don't have the spirit of God. They have the spirit of, of Satan. It says that that spirit works in them. Among whom also we want, all once conducted ourselves. Paul says, yeah, all of us, the Jews, Gentiles, everything. Who is working in us? The spirit of the prince of the power of the air. Uh, yeah, the adversary of God. We all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his, the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, not after we were saved, but before we were saved, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together. Again, this is all with Christ, in Christ. Made us alive together with Christ, raised us up together with Christ, made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Try to wrap your head around that, I dare you. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. It's all of God. The Calvinists are right about that. It's all of God, not of us. Okay, now, that what I wanted, I went through all that so you would hear all of it. But who is at work in the children of disobedience? The prince of the power of the air. And who are those people? Everyone that has been born again. Those who don't have the Spirit of God. As Paul said, we all once... We're in that situation before we were born again, if you have been born again. Otherwise, you're still in that situation. You know, there's a lot of churches you can go in, and you're going to be a stranger because they're not regenerate, and you are. That makes a huge difference. Uh, they won't be comfortable because God, God dwells in you. The spirit that convicts them of sin and righteousness and judgment uh, is dwelling in you. And you're in their midst. Okay. So what I wanted, now that I've got the important thing out of the way, I wanted to, to mention uh, something that's in the news. Uh, apparently, Ellen, or Alan, Alan, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Alan, Musk, the South African guy that, that owns much of the planet now. Um, the, the, what was that guy's name? Stark. Tony Stark 
of the movie Iron Man, you know, that's that's Elon Musk, the the genius that has all these inventions and and has taken over the American space program, all that kind of stuff that has a swarm of satellites around the world. He might probably has more satellites in orbit than anybody else in the world. Well, his space program is definitely bigger than the American space program and the European space program and a whole bunch of others all put together. Uh, he, well, he's got some pretty crazy ideas, like relocating like 100 million people to Mars. That doesn't sound like a good idea, knowing what Mars is like. Now, he's been watching too much sci-fi, I think. And obviously, you think Donald Trump has an ego? I suspect Musk's is like supersized. Donald Trump, except supersized. But uh, supposedly... He has now got control of Twitter. What's going on? People have a lot of hope in him. I would I think your hope is misplaced. What is going on? You know, and I heard he's fired all the top executives. Thank God for that. However, what is really going on? Elon Musk is not, he is thoroughly wed to, I'm not going to use the word, the, the expression deep state. I don't believe that's a correct expression. The dark state. Dark because it's hidden. Just like the prince of the power of the air. He works best in the darkness, where you don't see what he's doing. So we need to come around long and, Shine a flashlight on him. Look it. We caught you. You ever catch him in the act? I have. Especially when he comes and accuses God. And you realize, ah, now I know who's... Now I know where that thought came from. Had that happened one time, an automobile accident in San Antonio. I was going down to Texas. My son was with me, and uh, going down to the Rio Grande Valley. We had a load of stuff going down there. We were moving down there, and uh, it was raining. Uh, we were on the expressway. I had a Ford Explorer with a large tandem axle trailer. I should have put brakes on both axles, but it was wet. It probably wouldn't have made any difference. And I wasn't on the, I was trapped in the traffic all around me. And all of a sudden, all the stoplights, the taillights come on. And I slam on the brakes. And guess what? Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening because the vehicle's just, everything's just sliding. And I remember everything went like into slow mo. It was weird. And I, I looked over at my son and said, Brace yourself. We are going to impact or hit, something like that. It's like, really? You know, it's like everything is going in slow motion. And 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 then crunch. Boom, 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 boom. I couldn't have avoided it. There was no way around it. I, I was not ticketed. In fact, you just put a tiny little bump, a dent on the bumper on the Explorer. That was not the situation of the vehicle in front of us, though. That sheet metal just went, and somebody came out of their vehicle. Oh no, my God, my neck, my neck, and you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We were only going, you know, like five miles an hour at that point of impact, but still. But immediately, the accuser. What happened? I had this thought that came into my head, and it didn't come from me. God could have prevented that. Of course, He could have. But that was the accusation. The accusation is that God was not faithful. God didn't prevent that from happening. Blame God. No, I caught you, Satan. Now, rather than that, it's, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Nobody really got hurt. I, I think the one was more like false claims. Could have been, you know. But thank God. Things worse could have happened. But I caught him. I caught him. That that slimy serpent, I caught the thing, sneaking around in the darkness. 
accusing God. How dare you, devil? How dare you accuse God? You know, but that's what he does. He, he wants to accuse, wants us to believe him as he, he's accuser of God, accuser of the brethren. So it's the dark state, the sons of disobedience, those that aren't born again. He controls them. He works in them. So we talk about a conspiracy here. It's not a conspiracy. These people, he has a work in them. He is the he is the 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 guiding darkness behind it all. Him and his fallen angels. So Elon Musk he is so tied to the dark state with with SpaceX for example. Who do you think his biggest customer is? I haven't seen his balance sheet, but I know who it is. It's the United States government. He's been launching uh, secret military payloads, like NSA stuff. He's got some of the biggest rockets in the world. He's got the big, world's biggest space program. He launches people into space. Boeing's failed, I think. I think all the others have just, yeah, might as well give up. But he is so tied in that with contracts and everything else that he can't offend his best customer. Plus, the United States government can squash him anytime, just, you know, legal action. There was a lawsuit against uh, a criminal charge made against Tesla the other day after Elon Musk made some comments that didn't go down well with the Biden administration. You know, they've, they're, they weaponize everything. And Twitter, I suspect one of the reasons that this deal has gone through is that the dark state was unhappy with the current people in Twitter because they simply went crazy. And we'll see this as a warning to others, probably, like YouTube, because the dark state, you have to remember, what, what is social media? What is its function for the government? What is its function, period? What is the, the, uh, the business model of social media? Mine your information for directed advertising and for sale to whoever wants to buy it. To find out everything they can about you. It is far larger than the NSA. Why should the NSA do anything when social media does all the work for them? They don't have to spy on you. You willingly turn over all your information constantly. Every time you click on a video on YouTube, that all gets recorded and goes into your dossier. What are your likes? What are your dislikes? And when Twitter, Twitter was getting so crazy with their censorship that it was beginning to interfere with the purpose the government has in using those mechanisms, they're tapped in to the National Security Acts and everything else. They, they got access to all this stuff. They made you, we'll make you an offer you can't refuse. You can't refuse it. Try to refuse it, and you will be no more. So, it doesn't mean murdered. It means we can shut you down whenever we want. One way or another. Especially when they operate in darkness because the American people have no idea what's going on. The American people don't even know, you know, whoever reads those 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 uh, uh, agreements when you sign up, you know. Nobody reads that stuff. Page after page of legalese. Nobody reads that stuff. Anyway, Twitter was getting to the point where it was just toxic. 
and everybody was starting to go other places. So the NSA, uh, these people, they want they don't want to have to go all over the place. And some of these other things were not as accessible to them. There are ways to communicate using the web that is pretty much resistant to spy agencies, to cataloging what you want. Not that they can't crack that stuff. It's like the, the, the dark web, the onion web, uh, the, the Tor net, or whatever terms you want to use it. it it's not that it's not crackable. There, there's ways, and you can, you can tap into nodes. I suspect they have some of the, uh, that they control the basic nodes. But it, it takes a lot of computer, computer po uh, power to decrypt this stuff, to crack it. You know, the government doesn't allow you uh, to use encryption methods that are beyond their breaking ability. Remember that whole thing with, with Apple? They were trying to force Apple to, to break into a phone for them because they couldn't do it. But that's a hardware device. That's a little difficult, a different situation. But, uh, I mean, they don't want it to be hard. They want it to be easy. So I, I'm sure they have contracts with Facebook. I'm just speculating. Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Google, to get all that information. Just we'll just buy it from you. Why, why, we'll just buy it from you. Why? why they're not going to try to conceal it. They'll just sell it. They sell your information to others. So, Twitter was getting to be notorious. So are some of these others. So just like, how did the Soviets get into Afghanistan? Well, there was a communist revolution there, and the dictator that took over in Afghanistan was so bad that the Russians moved in to take him out and replace him. It was a, a good regime change thing. He is so bad, is, is, is just we got to get rid of him. So they moved in, got rid of him, put up somebody else that wasn't as bad, and then they're stuck in Afghanistan trying to sort this mess out. And, of course, because of the, the guy that, that they got rid of was a uh, communist dictator a la Stalin kind of model or Pol Pot kind of model that they got stuck in a mess because people had already begin beginning to resist. So it ruined their brand name. Of course, uh, atheistic communism is not going to fly in Afghanistan anyway. Uh, but they got trapped there. It's not that they, that they didn't install the, you know, this was trying to clean a mess up. But what, the, what happens is with the, back a little bit on course here, I can't remember how I got on Afghanistan. Uh, the, I could go back and review it and find out. Uh, the NS, the, 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 dark, the dark state, the, those that want total, uh, this goes back to George W. Bush, total information awareness. They want to know everything. They want to be able to control everything, like a digital currency where they can monitor everything you buy, every transaction, and then they have the option of all just cutting off your money whenever they like, a la 666. No one can buy or sell without the name or number of the beast. Dangerous technology. We've already seen Trudeau threaten that in Canada against the trucks, truckers and their protest. We've seen the, how the United States government has tried to crush Russia. We're not going to let you buy or sell. We're going to just freeze you up. We're going to seize all your assets in any bank that we can control. it. We're going to cut you out of SWIFT. And the Russians said, okay, we'll just set up our own system. We'll just dis disconnect from you. Smart move. Everybody else should do the same thing. But they want the, 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 this hunger for power. This Remember, the, the spirit that's behind this is the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience, prince of the power of the air, which is Satan. He is the one behind this, creating his end times 
government system. where Because he's not omnipresent. He's not the Holy Spirit. He can't work in everybody all the time. Even with all his other demons and angels. Can't do it. And he's bounded by God. He can only do what God allows him to do. He always works inside. Well, it's just like, how did he, how did he destroy Adam and Eve? Using God's commandment. He knew what God had said. He used the law that if you eat of that tree, you shall perish. So he tempted them to do what God said they can't do, knowing the consequences of that would be their spiritual death and eventual physical death. So Satan used God's command to destroy. Now, that's how he has to work within the boundaries. He twists things and perverts them for his own purpose. Just like people do. Ah, yeah, you are of your father the devil, and the deeds of your father you will do. Who said that? Jesus. To a group of Pharisees. So, with uh, Elon Musk, with, with Twitter, it was going so bad, just like, oh, there, there's why, Afghanistan, that it had to be, there had to be a regime change. Just like in Afghanistan, the Soviets had to come in. This Afghanistan ruler, although he was communist, he was being destructive to their purposes. He was uh, ruining their brand name. So w they had to take him out and put somebody else in. I think that's the same case with Elon and Musk and Twitter. Twitter was getting so bad and notorious, he was damaging the, uh, the purpose of Twitter as being an information, uh, a spyware system for the, uh, the dark state. It no longer was people were abandoning that. It was just becoming a mess, and it no longer served their purposes. So we need to replace the management with a new management, one that we already control because we have huge contracts with him, and he's totally dependent on us for what he does. I mean, who gave Elon Musk the, ability, the, the permission to launch his thousands and thousands of satellites and, and have his own private space program. He's only doing that with the permission of the United States government, as long as it benefits them. See, the, 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 the military nowadays loves to contract things out. So they have all these people working for them that don't appear on the official register. You know, it's like the military. Uh, I have con I had well, one that's still there now, but I have family that is in the military still as as civilian contractors, engineers, and or well, one that's still in. Um, and so I was when I was in the military. The military did everything. I mean, the laundry, the cooking, security, er uh, there was not private contractors. You trained, you recruited soldiers, trained them, and they did it for most things. They didn't make the, the weapon systems, but they maintained them. We maintained the ICBMs. We maintained the digital communications. We maintained the aircraft. We, we had jet engine mechanics. All that radar, all these things were, were soldiers and airmen and sailors. They did all the work. But that, uh, the Congress said, oh, you can only have so many people. So what do they do? Okay, we'll have all fighting people, and everybody else will contract out. Yeah, so everybody's contracted. Outside people. You know, the Russia does the same thing. They have that uh, one special group that's apparently uh, like contract um, mercenaries almost, or Blackwater, like American Blackwater, that they, they renamed something else because that, that name, that trademark no longer worked anymore. They had to rename themselves. Well, it's like Twitter. So you, you bring in somebody that you know is going to do what you say because 
they, he is so tied to you financially in every other way that he can't go rogue because you could ruin him very easily. You just yank on his card and say, hey, remember who you serve, us. And gets a little off line and, oh, guess what? The Justice Department just filed charges against you. Of course they're bogus, but doesn't matter. We'll ruin you anyway. So I wouldn't expect a whole lot of uh, Musk's taking over Twitter. But what I think they want to do is to, to rein it back in uh, and make it more suitable for what it, sort of what it was for discussion and everything else in order that they can use it better to keep tabs on what everybody's thinking and saying and doing. It's their version of domestic spy. Total information awareness. They rely. It's contracting the NSA spy system out to social media. And you voluntarily participate in it. And if you don't show up on so social media, you probably get on a list of people that aren't properly participating in our system of spying on them. So you don't have a cell phone? Oh, you're on the danger list. Uh, or you're on the old people's list. <laughs> so if you try to hide, you know, that, that shows up too. It's like, huh, this person is on the uh, dark web. Uh, okay, we got to put them on a special list too. God knows, and God God is bigger than all their shenanigans and their evil and their darkness. We are the light of the world. And as I said, I think uh, Elon Musk functions as the uh, person they brought in to replace the, the mess, the, the terrible tyrant that was in Afghanistan uh, because it no longer served their purpose. The Twitter management no longer served the purpose of the dark state. They were getting out of line, going too far. People were getting upset with them. They don't want people to be upset with the social media system. They use it. They love it. And it'll be a warning to YouTube and others that go too far. See, they, they got a little bit too carried away in enforcing the desires of, and that, then, of course, the current administration's way too far out, too. We can expect a regime change in Washington. But don't be deceived. The, 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 the system is, has been corrupted over time to such a degree that it designs to keep, it's designed to keep rogue elephants out. and is able to destroy anything that threatens the system. We've seen that recently, haven't we? The swamp fights back. The swamp is much bigger than Washington, D.C. The people in the Capitol don't really control the dark state. The dark state controls them. Who feeds the information to Joe Biden? The official, reliable information, the dark state. He only knows what they tell him to know. And considering Joe Biden, that's a really easy thing. That was a problem with Trump. He didn't necessarily believe what the NSA and the CIA and the FBI were telling him. So he had to go. He wasn't dependable. He wasn't easy to manipulate. He had to be eliminated, taken out, and they did. They did, and they're still trying to make sure he can't get back in, aren't they? That whole July, uh, January 6th show trial, it's utterly illegal. They don't care. They swore an oath to the Constitution, but they all immediately perjured themselves. They don't care what it says. 
they only serve themselves. And behind the scenes, they're, servers, they're servants of the Dark Lord himself, who is not human. This is not simply a human conspiracy. No, no, it's orchestrated behind the scenes by Satan and his minions. Some of them are human, and some of them are angelic. Yes, there was a, uh, a revolution, a, re uh, a rebellion in heaven before there was a rebellion in the garden. Correct? All right, so I just wanted to mention that. Do not be deceived by appearances. This is just my opinion of what may be going on behind the scenes. Now, the behind the scenes is not simply human beings. With The Bible, the Word of God, tells us that in the New Testament here. The spirit that works in the children of disobedience is at work in this world. And one of the games that he plays is dividing us into factions and setting us against each other. See, we're, we, he wants to keep us so intent at looking at the things right here that we don't see what he's doing there, the sleight of hand that he plays. By set, uh, setting faction against faction, while he himself is behind all of it, totally ignored. <laughs> because we are too busy fighting with each other. While he pulls the strings. Well, if you belong to Jesus Christ, those strings are cut. Now you're his people, not Satan's. But that's what's going on. Don't be deceived. The system is rigged. Satan pulls his strings to the degree he can under God. Because God, you know, that, that's one thing about the book of Job, I suppose. It gives us some insight into that. I kind of really don't like the insight that's there, but it does. That, that Satan, you know, he tries to play God. I mean, he tries to manipulate God. At one point in Job, now this is, God says, you deceived me to the devil. That is weird. That is weird. Uh, I don't know if I want to. I don't think Job is quite as authoritative as, say, Paul or John. But, I mean, there's that's... Uh, but we do see there that, of course, who wins in the end? It's, it's God wins in the end. Not Satan. Remember the contest. Remember what the background, the, the, the story is really in Job. Don't get lost in the details. The story is that originally God says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Job trusted God. Job was faithful to God. And then the, the other, Satan says, really? How about if I test him for you? Let's see how faithful he is. And God had enough confidence in Job because God was, you know, he was God's that he said, okay. All I can say is, I don't want to be Job. But God does that. God permits Satan knowing full well that God's children will persevere in the faith. As it is said in the New Testament, I can't remember quite where. I think it's, no, I won't say, because I'll get it wrong. Faith is our victory. All we have to do to win is to hold to Christ, to trust in him. He is our victory. Just hold to him, and you win, and God wins. 